Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, aid agencies warn of rising malnutrition is fighting continues in the Tigray region. Israeli airstrikes on Gaza continue for 10th day as essential services are hit. Teachers' Union reports over 1,600 COVID-19 deaths following election duty in a state in India. Volvo workers reject tentative deal reached between company and union. In our first story, the UN has reported that military blockades in Ethiopia's Tigray region have continued to restrict vital humanitarian access. As of May 17, the UNHCR has also reported continued fighting in large parts of the region. Beginning in November 2020, the war in Tigray has displaced over 1.7 million people so far. An estimated 4.5 million people are in dire need of aid and 63,110 are living as refugees in Sudan. Ground reports and local testimonies have also pointed to the continued presence of Eritrean troops in the region. The UN OCHA has been unable to provide proper aid to districts in the southern zone for the past four months. Telecommunications and electricity have also been down in the southeastern zone for the past two months. Electricity cuts, lack of fuel and military control over water resources has also affected access to clean water in several areas. Medical aid agency MSF has documented extensive damages to health facility including the looting and destruction of supplies by soldiers. Cases of sexual violence, including rape, continue to be reported. According to the director of the Ada Referral Hospital, 829 cases of rape were reported across major hospitals in Tigray in April. The UNHCR has also flagged the protection risks of gender-based and sexual violence in IDP sites. Aid agencies are also warning of increasing rates of hunger and malnutrition in the region. An aid coordinator told Al Jazeera that at least eight starvation deaths have been reported in the Makkele region. The deputy head of the interim government has also stated that there was a campaign to prevent farming in these areas. Trucks carrying seeds have been blocked from entering Tigray. As per a UNICEF update, 12.3% of the 12,176 children screened in the second week of May were diagnosed with moderate to acute malnutrition. 2.2% of the children suffered from severe acute malnutrition. Over 60% of the 4,447 pregnant and lactating women screened were identified as acutely malnourished. In our next story, Israeli airstrikes in the Gaza Strip continued for the 10th day on Monday, on May 19th. At least 227 Palestinians, including 64 children, have been killed in the attacks since last week. The Save the Children NGO has reported that airstrikes have also damaged 50 schools, affecting over 41,000 children. The Qatar Red Crescent's office and the Gaza's only COVID testing facility have also been destroyed. As per a UN OCHA update on May 18th, 72,000 people have been displaced because of the attacks. However, only 5 out of 24 air trucks were able to enter Gaza on Tuesday, after Israel closed the, closed the Karam Abu Salem crossing after opening it briefly. Meanwhile, Israeli forces arrested at least 58 Palestinians in, in Israel and 22 in the occupied West Bank in overnight raids. The Palestinian Prisoner Society has stated that at least 1,800 people have been arrested since April. Tuesday's arrest followed a general strike held by Palestinians across the occupied territories and within Israel. Here is a video feature on the general strike. <laughs> يوم الاضراب هذا هو رساله اول رساله الى الاحتلال الاسرائيلي والى العالم كله ان فلسطين وحده واحده بجغرافيتها وسياسيه وسياستها اليوم فلسطين تتوحد من بحرها الى نهرها ضد الاحتلال وضد الظلم وضد العدوان على غزة وضد السباحة المقدسات طبعا اليوم زي ما احنا عارفين تم اعلان اضراب كامل من الحركه الوطنيه الفلسطينيه 
واحنا عارفين انه احنا بامثل حاجه كشعب موجود في الضفه انه نقدم اي شيء لو بسيط تضامنا مع اهالينا في غزه والقدس لانه احنا جميعا حاسين بشعور العجز In our next story, we go to the state of Uttar Pradesh in India. Teachers Union has reported that 1621 teachers and staff have died of COVID-19. They were placed on polling duty during the recent village council elections. The state's chief secretary has assured that unwell teachers and staff would not be put on polling duty. However, those who were absent due to illness were suspended or faced salary cuts. The UP state government stated on Wednesday that only three teachers died of COVID while on duty. According to a letter written to the chief minister, the association had repeated, repeatedly asked for the postponement of council elections in April. However, these demands were repeatedly ignored and safety protocol was not followed according to the association. The Indian Supreme Court also refused to delay the counting of results. As per reports, a number of cases increased by five times in the district of Agra and eight times in Bareilly after the elections. As schools remain closed, teachers have also been assigned to COVID control rooms. The Teachers Association has now put forth eight demands. These include a compensation of one crore rupees, jobs for victims' families and a family pension. Teachers have also demanded the covering of COVID-19 treatment costs and the designation of teachers still on duty as corona warriors. The Indian Health Ministry announced on May 19 that the daily positivity rate of COVID cases has declined to 13.31%. The country recorded over 267,000 new cases as of the morning of May 19th. However, 4,529 reported deaths took place during a one-day time period. This is the highest number so far. The country is also witnessing a serious decline in vaccination rates as states flag a shortage of doses. And finally, we go to the US where workers at a Volvo trucks plant have rejected a tentative agreement offered by the company. Striking workers at the plant in Dublin, Virginia rejected the contract by 91% of the votes on May 16th. Organized by the United Auto Workers Union, over 2,900 workers had gone on strike on April 17th. This was following months of failed negotiations for a new contract. However, the UAW unilaterally called off the strike on April 30th, stating that a tentative deal had been reached. However, the workers were able to find out the full details of the deal days after the strike had been called out. They found that the deal would raise the costs of healthcare. As reported by Labour, notes out of pocket costs would rise to $2,000 a year by the end of the contract with a $4,000 deductible. The deal would also retain the tired wage system, tiered wage system rejected by the rank and file workers. Under the current agreement, workers are divided into core and competitive categories. New workers earn $16.70 per hour and get a dollar more per year up to five years. Meanwhile, the core workers earn an hourly wage of $30.02 by the end of the contract. The deal also contained provisions for alternative work schedule, which could include 10-hour shifts and alternate shift operations or schedules. Workers had started going back to work on May 3rd after the strike was recalled. However, calls have grown to resume the strike once again until a new deal is ratified. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.